My name is Charles Teo and I'm the Director of the Centre for Minimally Invasive Neurosurgery in Australia, the Associate Professor of Neurosurgery at the University of New South Wales, the Yo Gim Seng uh, Professor of Neurosurgery at the University of Singapore, uh, and the Director and the Founder of the Cure Brain Cancer Foundation. It is an increasingly recognised issue that many carers and parents of children with brain cancer, and often the children themselves, especially those with a poor prognosis, are more willing to accept a higher risk operation, especially in the absence of other effective treatments. Surgery often provides the best chance to extend life and improve quality of life, yet this option is all too often sidelined due to our current risk-adverse mentality. Also, this increased propensity for risk is often unrecognised by the medical profession. Current literature would suggest the more complete the surgical removal of the tumour, the longer the survival, especially if the intervention is minimally invasive and still maintains quality of life. If quality of life could be measured for both surgery and adjuvant treatments, it may show that surgery provides the better outcomes. In essence, if the options are limited, this changes the ethical boundaries of each individual case. It is an ethical grey area, when to operate and when not to, there are so many variables that need to be considered. The surgeon's experience, the literature on this particular disease, the support network for the patient, the religious and spiritual ideals of the family and patient, pre-morbid directives by the patient, just to name a few. I've seen many patients and have published extensively on these cases who are survivors because they have exercised their right to have surgery, sometimes against what I felt to be a reasonable decision. Many doctors and surgeons might say it is unethical to operate on child X. My response is that when dealing with medical ethics, my general rule, and that of most published ethicists, is that patient autonomy is paramount. The funding of childhood cancer research, especially brain cancer, should become a priority for any government. Arguably, we should prioritise research into serious diseases that affect the most vulnerable in society and those that represent the greatest loss of potential contribution to the future, in other words, children. In the developed world, childhood mortality from brain cancer is very high. Brain cancer has very low survival rates. Currently, in many countries, there is too much reliance on charitable organisations to raise research funds in this area. Brain cancer in my country, Australia, for example, kills more children than any other disease yet it receives less than 3% of government research funding. This was reflected in other countries across the globe and needs to change. There should be weighing in favour of childhood cancer research, particularly brain cancer, in government funding programs. The scientists themselves are moving ahead. There is momentum and global collaboration occurring in science. Guaranteed government funding for childhood cancer research at a significant scale such as 50 million euros per year could radically improve prospects for children with cancer. We know that the investment in research into childhood leukaemia over the past 30 years, for example, has had a major impact with five-year survival rates increasing from about 20% to as high as 90% now. There is no reason this could not be replicated with other childhood cancers such as brain cancer. The country that leads this will be leading the world in terms of potential treatments for children. There is a powerful case for defining a protocol for personalised treatment for children and young adults. Every tumour is different and every patient responds differently to treatments. And in children, side effects can be far more serious than in adults. But more importantly, they face having their lives cut brutally short. What is an ethical protocol for adults may not apply to children. There is a need to determine the role of surgery beyond simply extending life to also incorporate ethical questions around quality of life and mitigating the deficits of other treatments such as radiation and chemotherapy. Of course, any protocol needs to operate within the bounds of informed consent ethical requirements and risk awareness, but children and their families surely have the right to be included in this decision-making process.